Hello everybody, welcome to this bonus video. So I just continued today on implementing the project that we looked into yesterday to the Arduino because this is where it will be used to control relays. So what I have before you right now is a simple I2C scanner. It's a demo schedule you can download that searches all of the available I2C addresses and displays which one have responded. And in this case, it's found the one device and I'll put the picture on the screen of my setup. It's just an Arduino Uno with the same circuit, same connections as yesterday. So the address pin is also on ground. And we can see that it found that device on address 20. But it's weird because we just uh, looked into it that the device should have an address 40. Well, if you look at the PDF, the address is made up again from the fixed, the programmable and the read route part. And the address is actually this part, only the first 7 bit. That's why it's called the 7 bit I2C address. Sometimes when we're talking about the I2C address, we mean the whole byte, which is 8 bits wide. And it includes the read write, with write being 0. So we just say it's 40. So if these 4 bits, are the uh, first four bits of the byte and these are the second ones then this is number four so therefore four zero and that's how uh, stn32's i2c library also works you have to put in the whole byte address because stn32 kind of works with the whole byte so it does not it knows that this is the address uh, as a part of the library but it doesn't uh, work with the idea of the 7-bit address, but it works with the idea it's just a byte to send and it happens to be the first one that is needed to send, which is the address byte with the read-write bit at the end. So in the STN32 world and possibly somewhere else as well, we're talking about the whole 8-bit address. So having the read-write part at zero. So then we can manipulate the read-write bit later so one for reading and keeping it at zero for writing but arduino if you go to the wire library documentation on their website we can see that the wire library uses a 7-bit address throughout therefore any uh, any part of the code that might refer to the uh, i2c address it wants you to use the 7-bit part not the whole 8-bit and it also says if you have a data sheet or sample code that uses 8-bit address, you want to drop down the lower bit. So this is one example of different preferences and different implementation of the same stuff. You just have to be aware of it. So if I go back to the codes, let me pull up all of those. So yeah, the I2C scanner is finding it at 20, which is 40 shifted to right by one bit so we get a seven bit device address which is correct so it actually works as expected but you have to know the difference so just to not have this video that short let me just show you that my implementation of that library on arduino so i have it over here as pcal 6408 cpp because this is c plus plus for convenience sake i just copied this uh, definition this macro functions from the STN32's platform so write register read registers I'm uh, mostly here just for the modify register because I have the whole port as a global static variable and I'm uh, just so I know at all times what is the current state of the port and this is uh, done so because I want to set individual pins and I'm doing it with modify register so I'm just modifying the appropriate bits of this variable over here so i'm not overwriting every time all the others so when i'm setting one pin i'm not overwriting the other pins so i'm keeping the track of what is the current state so that's why i've uh, kind of platformed and created multiple functions for one purpose so i'm mostly going to be using the set pin but i do use the set port for testing so if you go up that setup is the uh, first primary example how I2C on Arduino works. So Arduino kind of idealizes everything. So it just 
uh, partitions everything as a beginning and end as far as I2C is concerned. So you can see that the first part is wire begin transmission and I'm inputting the device address, again 7-bit. And what this does is actually does the first part. So it sends the first byte to the device by beginning transmission, it sends its address. Then write, write the second byte, which in this case is a pointer to the configuration register. And the uh, second write is the data going into the configuration register. And then we close the transmission. So this is kind of encapsulated. But if you were to do that in STM32, you would just have three different writes. One for the address with the appropriate read-write bit. And then again the configuration and the data for the configuration register. So the STM32 kind of looks at all the bytes as equals, like bytes that have to be sent. And the order that have to be sent in, this is on you to know. But uh, when we use the memory, I have it over here, so when we use the memory write, it does that all for you. So it firstly writes the address, then the command and sends the data. So it does all in one go. But if you were to use the lower level libraries, you would have to do it manually and knowing which byte has to be sent first and which second and which third. So this is how the Arduino kind of points to that. The beginning, then middle part that you have to decide what it is, maybe just one write or two writes, and then you have to give the end. And the same with update port. In this case, the same address, but now we're writing into the output register for this device and then the value of the global variable port. So this is why I have this over here. And this just basically sends the value of the local uh, variable port. To set a different port, we use the set port function and this one just sets the global variable to whatever the uh, argument of this function is and then calls the update port. So it, it updates the local variable and also the IC. And the set pin works with that function so it updates the port so it forces a new value of the global port but it does it in a, a non-destructive way so it actually records this value and then adds the appropriate version of the pin you want to manipulate so which bit of the pin and then what is its state so it just manipulates that one bit and it doesn't manipulate all the others that define all the other pins so these are all the function and I'm making the first three uh, global. So setup, of course, set port and set pins are to be used. And this is how I wrote this library on Arduino. So it's pretty similar in speed. You just have to approach with different uh, approach, actually. So you just have to uh, read all the documentation. I found this really useful. So I just quickly got up to speed how to do this on Arduino. Uh, which is different from STM32, but I would say it's pretty similar. So it's not that complicated to write uh, for unknown IC that doesn't have a written library for it straight from the wire library. So it's quite fast. So maybe uh, if I'm not feeling uh, running the STM32, then this would be a very good option because it's very easy. But I did miss because I had some problems with this function over here. I did miss the breakpoint and the variable watch. And for me, this is almost the biggest um, tipping point in order to use rather STM32 than Arduino because I, I see that this library implementation over here is very easy, but I need that uh, breakpoints, need that step-by-step -step execution because once you get used to it, it's really faster to debug than just print printfs everywhere and hope for the best. So this is what I wanted to just uh, mention to you quickly. Uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.